So, my uh, Facit uh, model TK from 1936 uh, is actually repaired. I'm going to try to uh, give you a little tour of it. Actually, that model I checked with the model number is um, was actually made in 1950. So, they made those machines for a really long time. Uh, so, no changes from on no almost uh, 14 years. Um, so, it's famous f um, mostly for uh, having invented the uh, entry by uh, keys. Now, it's easier to appreciate uh, what makes the facet special if you uh, compare it to a more traditional pinwheel calculator. Um, which this one is a Brent's Vega, and on a traditional one, you set the numbers with those little levers, and then you uh, the carriage moves. So, to do the units, so I've done it three times that's to do addition, and then you move to do the tens that would be 23 times, and 300. 23 times and you get this beautiful super long number result down here uh, and then to uh, subtract you just turn in the other direction so that's the basic of the pinwheel machine uh, but facet really improved on it uh, and uh, in particular the number entry is much better it's from the keyboard here and they were the first one to do that with you notice the zero in the middle, that's why the zero is exactly still in the middle in your computer keyboard. Right, and this one has nine numbers. And after that, the carriage moves, but within the machine doesn't stick out like this other one. Uh, so the way it works, a pinwheel machine, so pretty straightforward. Let's enter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It comes over here. And then uh, it, to make an addition, you just turn the crank forward and it's gone up into the result register. And now we let's add uh, another number to it. So that's to clear the register. And we do eight, seven, no, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's zoom a little bit on it, and the one and the two, and clunk, there you go, it did all the carries and it's whatever, lots of ones and a zero. Now, it's totally reversible, if you want to do a subtraction, you just turn the handle the other direction, and off we go, we are back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, the multiplication is done by doing uh, successive uh, additions, as in old pinwheel machines. So, for example, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, we're going to. Uh, I need to also clear all the registers with this one. Here we go. We do it times one. Is this one? times 2, crank it twice, it's no 24,000 something, times 3, no it keeps going, now uh, if you want to do times 13 or times 23, you just move it to the next uh, column, here is 423 times this number, gives you that big number, and uh, of course you can see that it gets quite repetitive, a lot of turns, so there's a trick in that machine um, because it has uh, features uh, called tense transmission. Let's see, we would uh, want to do time 9723. In this case, we don't want to crank it nine times, so we do instead a reverse one time, go to the next and do a plus and with only two crank turns I have a nine here so uh, you get the idea it's pretty quick to multiply uh, big numbers uh, division is and there are 
many methods to do it. There are three methods to do it. Uh, I'll show you my favorite here, uh, which take advantage of the um, tense transfer. So the first thing that you want is move the number uh, all the way to the left, and there's a special key for it. So we we'll, would we'll do three five five up. Then we turn the crank to put it up in the result register. And uh, now we're going to divide it by 113. And we do the same trick. And uh, the fraction 355 on 113 is an approx a good approximation of pi. So let's clear that register here. And uh, <coughs> what we do is we listen to the bell. So we start by doing negative turns. So one, two, three, four. You heard the bell, it's pretty faint. Once it has rung, uh, which means it has overflowed, we go to the next column and we do positive cranks. Until it rings, it rung. Then go the other way around and do negative turns and then positive turns takes a lot of turns and you can see pi is coming out and then you just continue around listening for the bell so I don't know how many Digits are good in this approximation, but here we have it 3.1415929. Okay, so that's good for the basic functionality. Now, this machine looks pretty simple, but it has actually quite a few tricks up its sleeve. It's a lot more subtle than it looks like. Um, first, you know, how would you do a chain calculation? Uh, for example, I have this. Uh, little period manual, this is it's hilarious, there's a little gnome on it. And uh, he wants to calculate uh, the wallpaper area and he has a big area and makes a few cutouts. So you know, he calculates the whole area, then he subtracts some, um, some, some squares. So for that you need to do um, intermediate calculations. So let's follow along if we can and we're going to do 825 times 265 so let me set this correctly. These are the decibel, decimal numbers. There we go. It should be 2, 2, and 4. Here we go. So 825. Here we go. Times 265. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go to the next column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and one, two. And then the next step would be to do two times 1.4 but subtract it. So we just clear those registers and do 2.00 and I'm going to multiply it by 1.4 but do negative turns. One, two, three, four and then one. And you have seen that here, uh, this little red uh, indication came on, uh, which means that I am doing negative turns, but it still counts positively in the uh, uh, counter. And then next, we have to do the last factor exactly the same way. It's 215 uh, times 0 0.9, so we are going to use the trick. Uh, move over here and do a negative turn. And the result is 17.12 something and uh, we did it right. It's what it shows in the manual. So you can do pretty interesting chain calculation on this one. Uh, here's another neat trick that comes from an example problem from actually this is the original manual uh, from the 1930s and it says you have a dozen eggs that cost $3.75 
uh, what is the cost of seven eggs and by the way at the same time can you give me the cost of just one egg uh, so which is the rule of three and with a trick it can be actually done in one step one calculation so we put 12 number of eggs pat some zeros seven the one we want uh, to know how much it cost and move it to the left then we know it must cost 375 so we are going to make 375 appear over here let's see 3.6 4.8 that's too much 3.72 that's pretty good 3.73 4, 4. that's too much so let's do a little less 3.75 <clears throat> and here's your answer uh, 12 eggs cost 375 one egg is 0 0.3125 because what we just did is did uh, is what's called an additive division uh, we just divided 375 by 12 and that's over here and then at the same time, we multiply the price of one egg by seven in this little corner. And so the price of seven eggs is 2.1875. Pretty neat. Three calculations in one go. And of course, uh, no good uh, mechanical calculator demonstration is complete without trying to extract a square root. So we're going to try to extract the square root of 150 uh, by the successive approximation method. So with that method, you need a, a guess to start with, uh, and as close as you can get. Uh, uh, let's, for 150, uh, one thing that comes immediately to mind is to try 12. Uh, 12 times 12 making 144, as everybody knows. So we enter 12, uh, which is our guess, and we try it out. Multiply it by 12, and it's 144. Uh, so the next step is to refine the approximation. For that, we just multiply our initial guess here by 2. So that becomes 24. And we try to add it to this number so we get closer to 150. So let's try it. 151, that's a little too much. I'm getting close. 150 exactly. And then the answer of our new refined uh, approximation is here. It tells us that 12.25 uh, should be a good guess. So let's try to use it, we use the same method again and see if we can develop more decimals. So we repeat the process, now our new guess is 12.25 and we can now clear this one, this one and repeat the process so we're just going to try our new root. 12. 25 times 12, 25, and uh, yeah, it is a good approximation, so it's 150.06, uh, so we have uh, improved it considerably over our first guess, and let's try to do the same thing, we multiply this by 2, so it's 2450, 2450, and now try to get this and close as close to 150 as we can so we have to tickle the uh, further decimals here so we're a little bit over so I'm doing negative turns uh, that's pretty close okay it doesn't matter if I approach it from one side or the other Okay, and well, this is as close as I can get. And then, uh, if we're not mistaken, and uh, the root 
of 150 is 12.247449. Let me write that down. 12.247449. And of course I could check it on this machine, but that would be no fun. Uh, instead of that I have another one. And please welcome the great grand uh, grandson of the Fashi TK of 1936 is the uh, 1131J from 1960 something. And in all of its glories with at least probably in, uh, early 1970s and with Nixie tubes. Look at that, that beautiful display with plenty of numbers. Uh, so let's try it. 12.247449 times equal. And that was actually a very good route. It's uh, 150 with plenty of zero and just a number that's way off at uh, the end. Uh, and actually, uh, I can, you can check it on uh, another iconic calculator here, HP15C. The root of 150 is, and if you compare it with that, 1247449, actually all the decimals were exact. So, I think you can give a, a hand to the TK. Uh, calculator from Facit uh, designed in 1936.